All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. If you didn't already hear me talk with uh, Karima about this, we are, am I saying your name correctly? Yes. Okay. Um, we are recording this webinar. It will be on our YouTube channel. So um, please check for that after. And uh, before we get started, I would like to thank Karima for joining us today. Karima is the Supervisor of Advanced Academics and Specialty Programs at Prince William County Public Schools. Karima, how are you doing today? I'm great. Um, thank you for having me here. I'm really glad to be here with you guys today. We're so glad to have you. I love your, I love the Prince William story um, and how it came about using Troy. So I appreciate you taking the time to just share a little bit more about that. Um, all right, so let's just jump right in. We have our first question is just to tell us a little bit about the district that you work in. Tell us about Prince William County Public Schools. Yeah, so Prince William County Public Schools were located in Northern Virginia, just outside about DC, about 20 minutes away. We are a long county in that we go all the way from people who know the area from 95 to 66. Those are our, our highways that kind of bookend us. And so our demographics really vary from our east side to our west side. So we have a lot of Title I schools. We have some very affluent schools um, and everything kind of in between. Uh, we have about 90, over 90,000 students, almost 100 schools. Um, and I run the advanced academics, so our AP, IB, Cambridge, and dual enrollment programs, as well as our specialty programs, which is going to be for most other schools, like their school choice or like their charter-like programs. And, um, and I oversee that whole process for all of our schools. Um, all of our schools don't have a specialty program, but we have um, 13 high schools that do probably eight or nine middle schools and eight elementary schools that okay. have programs. Wow. And everybody, just uh, just a quick note at the bottom of the screen or on the screen, we have some fun facts too that you can you can check out. So this one is that you have a 93% on-time graduation rate. That is impressive. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Every year we try to get a little better. So, you know, going towards that 100%. That's terrific. So you started to tell me a little bit about your role. This is our second question. So um, just about your role specifically, I think on the screen are all the different kind of the types of programs. You have like culinary arts, you have project lead the way. Um, do. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about these specialty programs that you, that you uh, manage and run. Sure. So I actually work, run our specialty programs in conjunction with our career and technical education department. Um, and the ones that are on this one, many of them are theirs. And so um, when I came in about two years ago, we had what we used to call like the big S specialty and the little S specialty, and it got super confusing. Um, and so we've now just lumped them all together. So we have a lot of our vocational techs. So we have law and public safety, we have JROTC, we have culinary in two of our schools, Project Lead the Ways in all of our high schools. We have aviation maintenance in one of our schools, um, a pre-governor school. So in the state of Virginia, we have governor schools. Most other states will have that. Um, we host one of those schools. Uh, it's Governor School at Innovation Park. And so we have a school that offers classes in a sequence that prepares kids to get into that program. Um, so we have academic classes or programs. We also have obviously the vocations, cabinet making, TV production. So we're somewhere around 28 programs, I believe, is where we are. Um, CTE oversees the vast majority of them. Um, and I oversee kind of the entire application process for all of them, CTE or, advanced, or academics wise. Um, and I spend a little bit more of my time on the uh, academics portion. So like the AP and the IB and the Cambridge programs. Okay, so do students have to apply for IB or AP programs? No, so our, with our AP program, we offer AP in all 13 of our high schools, and that's what every student in our division is available to uh, participate in. Um, two of our schools, two of our high schools are IB schools, um, mm -hmm. and so if you are a base school student who attends that normally, you are able to participate in IB, but if you are outside of that school, but you are interested in an IB curriculum, you would transfer in. Um, we do have two schools that we have designated as AP scholar schools, and so those schools offer just a more robust number of AP courses, so every one of our schools offers at least five, um, but they're going to offer like some of the nuanced ones, so like AP European history that very few people in our division are offering, 
or like sometimes the AP statistics and those high level maths are difficult. Um, and then our one little like kind of caveat is we also offer the Cambridge program. Oh. We, are, we have the only three Cambridge schools in the state of Virginia, um, two on the high school level, one on the middle school level. Um, and our middle school program is a, um, a Cambridge training center as well. That's great. So you have Cambridge and IB. The Cambridge IB and AP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah. Um, and we also offer for that academics portion, we offer dual enrollment and we partner primarily with Northern Virginia Community College. Um, but we do have a partnership with Shenandoah as well for our Teach for Tomorrow programs. Perfect. Wow. I love it how you condensed all the AP courses as well, like the ones that are hard to, to fill, you know, to get 20 students to take that one course. You kind of have them in two locations. That's great. Great idea. Um, my next question is what made you, oh, I do have one more question. If I go sure. back to the, 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 um, the governor's school, do you use that? Do you use script choice as well? For, I for do. Okay. I do. Yeah. So we use it obviously for the pre-gov school because they're part of our, you know, kind of everybody, but for our governor's school process, we do. Um, the questions we ask are different. So we ask them to do different things that we do for our general applications, but yeah, we, run, we use it for them. And it's wonderful. This is the first year we've used Script Choice for any of our programs. I'm happy to tell you that story when we get there, okay. um, but it's been wonderful. So yes, we use it for everything. Perfect. Okay. So what made you change the process you had? So clearly you had something different. Um, yes. What made you change? Um, so there's a couple of things. So we um, have a new superintendent this year from um, Chicago, Dr. McDade, and one of her big pushes is organizational coherence. So let's get as many people on the same page doing the same things as possible. Um, but actually the change came out of a mishap last year. We, um, when I came into this position the year before, they, we had a prog uh, like a database that our IT department created where students would just put in their student number and it would pop up the schools where they're zoned for and say you can apply for those. Um, the problem is that database wasn't secure and we couldn't guarantee the security of the information that was in it. Um, and they basically told us at the end of that year that they were discontinuing the use of it. We weren't able to use it. Um, so we had almost one, we thought we had one more year with it. Um, and through um, as all things happen, right? You have a, a, a series of unfortunate <laughs> events and we had to shut our database down two weeks into our application season. And because IT was unable to recreate that, we were scrambling for what we were going to do. Um, last year's process, I hand created a Google Doc or um, a Microsoft Office form that people would, you know, that would go in and they choose if this, then this, and you, you know, all of this branching. Um, and I just knew that it wasn't sustainable with the number of kids and the number of applications that we have. There's no way that we could accurately do that work. Um, I don't, I didn't have the time to do it. I mean, we have with 98,000 students, you have, we had over 7,000 applications this year and it's just not feasible for at that time, a department of one to do. Um, so we looked out um, and I found you guys, you guys actually had been sitting in this, somehow had communication with my previous, uh, the person that was previously in my role, but um, probably because that application program worked, he never looked out. And so I reached out and really you guys had a lot of the things that really worked for us. One, the biggest one was the security of the student information. So we couldn't, we can't, right, at a division this size, so close to the DC and the you know ties to the federal government and military, we can't compromise our data. So that was really the very first thing is we were looking for what could secure our data, what had the um, robust capabilities to handle the volume that we had something that was easy for our coordinators to do. So I oversee the application process, but the actual selection of students happens at the school level and we oversee that portion. So something that would also give us at the division level, the ability to oversee what was happening at each school for compliance, but also, um, you know, but it was user friendly so that our coordinators could access it pretty easily. It was very clear to families. It was very clear to all of our stakeholders how to do things, when to do things, what buttons to click, where to go and what the outcome was going to be. And then the final piece was really the communication process at the end. Um, 
in the olden days, we would write a letter. So if you got into a program, we wrote you a letter and we sent it in the mail and you had X number of days to put a stamp on your acceptance and mail it back. And so as you can imagine, things were lost all the time, right? And we had always families that said, I didn't know, I didn't know, or I sent it in, it was lost in the mail, all of those things. And it really makes it difficult for us to get accurate counts for our schools with mm -hmm. snail mail. Um, so we need something that had more of immediate access or answer and something that we could really track very quickly um, in real time. I love your um, positive outlook on things. So when you were explaining that story, I mean, <laughs> about it getting um, shut down, you know, and then how nimble you had to be to create that other system. All while I'm sure it wasn't always like this, but the whole time you told that story, you had a smile on your face. <laughs> I, just, I, I tell people, this is my resting face. Like I have like, I was in this presentation a couple of weeks ago and they were like, you can stop smiling, Kareem. And I'm like, no, this is my resting face. Like it really, it really is. And I don't know why, but thank you. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, that's, that is such a, such a benefit to you. <laughs> that's great. Um, okay. So you said that you found it this um, you found scribbles kind of by happenstance you were looking so tell us a little bit more about how you selected why you selected scribbles or how you selected scribbles. Yeah, so the first thing I did is I reached out and said, what do you guys have help me right, this is my problem, this is where I want to go, I know that there's an issue. Um, you know, and so right away your team said, okay, great, let's set up a demonstration. Mm -hmm. And as we set up a demonstration, we realized that we were also using some of your other services in another part of our division. So you guys do our records and mm -hmm. our um, student enrollment. And so it kind of, when we're talking about that organizational coherence, right? It sort of made sense that families would be familiar with some of the processes in the application. Um, but what I really liked is you guys were really the only one that I found that could hold um, the nuances of our programs. Like most of our programs, I would say 95% of our programs all use the exact same application, mm -hmm. but then we have others that don't, right? And the ability to upload documents, the ability to always access those uploading of documents. Mm -hmm. um, and that, when families change things, it you guys held on to the old records, right? Like, so nothing, our developer always says, like, nothing's ever lost. It just is somewhere else. Right? You can always find it um, because you, I'm sure that everybody who's listening, especially if you work in a school, there's the number of times that you get a family that says, like, you lost it. Like, you did this or you can't, right? Or this happened and I don't know what happened. And I can go back in the records and I can say, well, no, when I look, I see that you created an account for Karima, but there's no application tied to it, right? And so that ability to really have that peace of mind was really, really important for us. Um, and then because you guys were already being used in other parts of our department division, it made total sense. The price was great. Um, I have a very, very small budget. Um, and so to ask for a scribbles for you guys to do this account, I was like, well, I'm going to have to ask for like triple my budget <laughs> for next year. And not one person blinked. They were like, absolutely. What do you need? Let's get it done. Um, and so, but it, it was part of that's because the pricing is so attainable mm -hmm. and the support is constant, right? Like there's, my uh, developer and I, Tommy and I, we text all the time, um, <laughs> right? And so we know that we're never alone, that we're going to have, you know, if I can't get one person, he'll say, here's what the really issue is, we'll get it somewhere else. And I really appreciate that. And we have grown to really love it. And we talk about you guys fondly all the time. Good. That's great to hear. And I have, um, after this, we need to connect about the thing we talked about yesterday. I talked, I talked to Tommy about it. So awesome. you've got some stuff to, to share. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> he is great. We all love Tommy. Um, so how did using script choice change the way your process worked? Yeah, so it, it really made our work a lot easier. We were able to, I will say this, there was a lot of some beginning stuff that you have to do. So one of our big goals was really to make sure that as all of our families were informed about our opportunities that we offer, the number of times that people say, I knew nothing about this. And I'm like, but I've sent 50 emails, right? And so we did um, a really tough, um, not tough, a very robust um, advertising campaign. 
And so, and what that did is it allowed us to really kind of focus on the way that you guys, the scribbles, scripts, scribbles and script choice um, process our data and process our information. So the first thing that's really easy is I can see every kid in the division when they apply, what they applied for, where they applied for, what choice, because ours do have to rank their choices for second and third. Um, and I am able to watch that process in real time. I'm able to share that information with the coordinator on the school level so that they can make that decision in real time. We are able to, the process for just accepting kids is just so much easier. I mean, it's a button and it's definitely one kid at a time, but it's a button. In my old, you know, this is, I, I'm very familiar with Microsoft Excel because I had to create that database last year, that application. But I mean, I really was having like all this conditional formatting where you click and you say yes, and it turns the whole line green. And I don't have that. When somebody approves it, it's in the, it's in the report. You run the report, you can see who's approved. And we've also been able to really um, identify and understand some um, uh, variants and practices across of our, our across our schools. Mm -hmm. We always are looking. All of our programs, the vast majority of our programs, have what we call sister programs. So mm -hmm. if there's a TV program productions um, program on one side of the county, we try to lift one in the other side on the other end of the county. It helps with transportation, some other things as well, and access. Um, if we have um, IB on one side, we try to IB on the other side. So we try to balance. And what we notice really quickly by using your process, because we could see things at the district level, we realize that there's a lot of misalignment in our programs mm -hmm. in not just the way that um, the programs are run. They don't have to be twins, right? They just have to be same mother and same father <laughs> is how we describe it. But we had people like distant third cousins. Um, and then we had um, the, the way that we chose our students in some programs very drastically from the way that we chose students in other programs. And we could see that through the reports that existed in Scribs. And so we were able to go in and say like, hmm, like this kid got in and they have this grade or they have this mm -hmm. thing that makes it really interesting, but this kid didn't get in and they probably should have both gotten in. Um, we also run lotteries on several of our programs. And so that lottery process, instead of having to like copy all the student names and numbers and put it in the randomizer in the, in the internet and doing that, your program does that for us. We make sure that people are on the right tier. So if we, some of them have a sibling lottery first, and then it really just does the work for us. So it's very fast, it's very efficient. Um, everything can be undone, which is really nice. Um, in case we make errors, I mean, we're human, so we do make errors, but it really has made our process so much faster, so much more streamlined. Um, and then the last piece of that is in our office, we do all of, um, in our student management system, we do the ones that say like, this kid is in this program and we project those kids to their next school if they're not going to the, the next natural progression. Mm -hmm. And we tag them as being a part of our program. And we're the, there's two of us in our office, three of us in total we're the only ones in the entire division that can do that work. And so before I was very reliant on the school to tell me who they had accepted. And now I can just go in and I can see it and I can do it and I can verify. So when people say like, hey, Bridget, Bridget got accepted. I'm like, no, Bridget never applied. <laughs> right? Or, you know, hey, I, you know, we're, we're eliminating some of the issues that came from our choice programs with like recruiting and some of the other um, concerns that always come. We have some choices sometimes. Yeah. It's like a large district where sometimes you have to take the word of people because you're like, I don't have time to dig into this anymore, you know? So now you're right. The data is there. Yeah. Um, what did your families think? How'd they react to the new process? We did a lot, a lot, a lot of work with our families. So, I mean, every, we know I'm a Gemini. I like change and I hate change at the same time, right? And so I'm like, why are we doing something new? What, where, where did it go? Where can I click my button? I'm so used to doing this. And so what we ended up doing is we did a very robust social media campaign. We, I mean, we blasted them on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and we held information sessions. We always hold at least two information sessions per year um, at the division level. This year we did 55. Wow. Um, yeah, we are, we are very tired. <laughs> 
So um, we did 55 because we felt like it was really important, not only that we showed families a, the new program, but that we also assisted them um, with the nuances or the, the nuances of the program, the little pieces that they had. We went to schools in a way that we've never done before out of this office. Um, we, um, on the last two weeks before we closed our applications, we held information sessions and it was by Zoom. And so it was help sessions. And so we just had a Zoom link. We blasted it to the entire community. And we said, if you need help filling out an application, come join us. And so we had families jump into our Zoom and we helped them one at a time. We just had multiple rooms and I would take one and go in the room and walk a family through, share your screen. Let me show you, this is what I see. Yes, I can see your application submitted. When you log back in, you can see that your application submitted. And my coordinator did the same thing. And we did that. Um, three hours a day for 10 days in a row. Um, and yeah. so it, it was a lot. I mean, that's the one thing that everybody in our office talks about, like 55. And I'm like, yeah, we did 55. Um, but I think it was worth it. It did two things for us. One, we really were able to spend a lot of time with our families and really understand what they needed. We were able to address some hesitancies that they had. <clears throat> um, we had families, we have a lot of um, second or English language learners in our division and being able to help them. We offered our um, services in every language that they requested. Um, I speak Spanish, so I did my own um, translations for that or interpretation for that. But like we did Portuguese and Pashto and things like that. And so just having that time and being able to spend that time with the families was really helpful. And then on the back end, it really, although we still had a lot or what we would consider a lot, we, it really eliminated a lot of our families saying, I didn't know anything about this or I got stuck and I didn't know how to get help because we had so many opportunities for them to get help. Um, we will not do that many <laughs> presentations next year for anyone who's thinking 55 is a lot. It is a lot. It was worth it for us this year. Um, and it's, I think when we were rolling out a new program, it was worth it. We, we don't have the ability to sustain that in the future, but I, as families become more familiar, we use this also for our virtual learning um, school this year that we'll launch for next year. And so as families become more and more familiar with this program, I think it's gonna be easier and the less we're gonna to need to do that work. I think that is amazing. And again, that smile is just, so <laughs> I love it. 55. 50, 55. And someone was like, oh, didn't you do 40? I'm like, we did 55. <laughs> Give us every single that. one. <laughs> you guys are that department that everybody else is like, of course, they had to do 55. <laughs> <laughs> we also um, yes we have like, we do like a family engagement series where um, families come and they learn about different things so like specialty programs is one gifted education is another one and so we were until very recently holding the record for the number of families that attended and just got inched out by gifted so now we you know it's personal now so we're you know we're coming back strong <laughs> next year <laughs> so. Uh, so that was how families did with it. How about your internal stakeholders, the people that were using the system in the, in the, uh, in the district? So I'm, I'm very lucky in that I, the, my stakeholders trust me and they're, they, and when I'm so like, look, trust me, this is going to be great. They were like, okay, we're hundred percent on. Um, we did a, we did some really good training with them. We, um, Tommy came and he did like one-on-one -on -one with them. We also offered them the same one-on-one -on -one support that we offer to our families. We hold office hours with them all the time anyway, and just say, hey, this is what's coming up next. This is what you need to do. These are four or five of our office hours pop in anytime you have questions. So our families and our, well, our coordinators and our stakeholders are used to getting to us anytime they want. We're available during those office hours, but if you can't make it, tell me another time. They really enjoyed it. What they, um, the feedback that I consistently got is, this is so much easier than what we've been doing before. Um, this is so great. Where did you find this program? How do I, and, and then you get the couple of like, how do I's. Um, and even the, the how do I's were really like, how do I, and I'm like, oh, you click here. And they're like, oh, that's it? Like, there's not more? There's no more. Mm -hmm. And so we now, because we were able to put in a process that was so easy for them to use, very user-friendly, and it was fast, we are now are, start, are finding that 
what they're asking for for next year is very different and more on the professional development side. So before there was a lot of like, show me how to do this. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, hey, can we learn about these other things that we were supposed to be focusing on, but we never had time for because mm -hmm. we spent so much time approving our applications. Like now that I know how to approve and pull transcripts and do all those things really fast, can we start talking about some of the in-depth reports that I can use to improve my program and my building? And so mm -hmm. it has really helped in that way. Um, my other stakeholders like the school board, we did a presentation for the school board and we talked about our presentations that we're doing. I did one for our superintendent as well. Um, and we really truly haven't had a lot of complaints. Um, we haven't had any complaints from our internal stakeholders and really the complaints from the outside stakeholders aren't really, we have enough data that exists within the program that we're able to very confidently stand on the decisions that we've made this year. Um, so we, I think we're 100 happy all around. That is amazing. It's hard uh, to get that many people to like something, right? Um, but it's yeah. it's been great. It's it, like I said, it's it's worth the time in the beginning to get the results on the end. Well, it's a true compliment to you that your team trusts you like that as well. Like you say, guys, this is going to work, and they say, yeah, okay, I, we trust you. That's a huge. That's a. I mean, that didn't happen overnight. You. No. That is a well, compliment. Real, thank you. Relationships are my bread and butter. So I feel like I start there and I can make everything else work. And so, um, you know, and they truly, the vast majority of them were there when I created a Microsoft <laughs> form overnight with branching in it, right? And so I think that they were like, if this woman is crazy enough to build that <laughs> whole thing in a week, I think we could trust her to do something else. <laughs> So. Oh, so what would you say to others that are thinking of moving to something like this that are, you know, hesitant? They, maybe they have spent all that time building their branches and they're like, no, <laughs> it took way too long to build that and not doing anything else. Why would, yeah. why should they consider this? So, I mean, one, the really easy is that it's, it's just so easy, right? Um, what I, there's a couple things about this program that I really enjoy that is, you know, if you're on the fence, here's where you go. One, I said it before, nothing is lost. Nothing is ever, ever, ever lost. It always exists there. It's just, where does it exist? And sometimes you might take a minute to find it, but it, everything is there. Um, it creates a really good, the report section creates a lot of really good stuff. So you can go into reports and you can say, I wanna see every kid in the division who was accepted to a program, check, got that. I wanna see every kid that applied, check, I have that. How many exactly? Um, applications do we do? Check, I have that. And so the data that you usually ask for, like the people, mm -hmm. school board members who, you know, they want to know, you know, are we servicing our kids? Are we reaching our students? That information is like right at your fingertips every single time, without a doubt. The number of times that someone will say, hey, Karima, can you check on so-and-so's application? And I can go in and say, yep, they submitted on this day at this time, and this is what happened. Um, and it has eliminated all fuss, all complaints, all any kind of ambiguity it doesn't exist anymore the second part is it's it's a one-stop shop you really can go here and do everything with your families and walk them through the process um they're like the biggest um I don't know, downfall or back. I don't even know if it's a downfall. There's just a lot of clicks sometimes. They're depending on the family. So if it's a, especially for an English language learner, there can be a lot of clicks. But mm -hmm. I found that if you, first of all, teach families how to um, translate that page at the top of the application portal, if you teach them how to translate that page, that is step one. And so and that might be the biggest asset, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, right? Like I, I don't speak. <laughs> Pashto. <laughs> and I wouldn't even begin to begin to tell you how to like, you know, how to translate that. And then having to send it over to our translation services. I mean, we were spending last year, we spent thousands of dollars in, 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 in translation services on like thousands and thousands for stuff that that your program does on, on its own, right? It translated using Google. It's not a perfect translation, but it's so close that our families understood. Um, I love that um, it is every program using the exact same application all the time. And so because our families can apply to multiple programs, they're already familiar with the system. And so they just keep coming back and they're like, oh, I've seen this before. Oh, I remember this. Oh, I know how to do this. Um, 
there is the big piece that we want, we have is that families, once they move into the county, after a certain deadline, they can apply off cycle. And this creates a really nice off cycle system for them as well. Our old system, they used to do paper off cycle applications. And that's where all of our um, creative transfers were happening, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I really want to do automotive tech, but they never one day spend a day in an automotive tech class, right? Or um, they happen to pay play a sport that is really fun at that school. Um, and so that really eliminated that because we see every single application that comes in, we have the ability to address that and to track that information. Um, and for students or families that don't go through the right process, they don't get marked as part of our program because we're the only three people that can do it, right? Um, right? And that is probably something that's also really important if your division does that or if your district does that is to really kind of restrict who has access to, to marking your children in their programs. It also depends on how much like control you want, right? So we saw a need where we really had to lock that process down. But if it's not an issue in your division, then don't worry about it. Pick and choose what you want and what you use this program for and how you use it to control your programs or your offerings and your choices. Is. Um, I know that there are divisions that say like if you apply to three programs and you get in all three you get to choose which one we don't do that we mm -hmm. let them apply for three and if they are accepted into all three we place them based on their rank so if they choose plumbing as number one oops excuse me sorry plumbing is number one um, TV is number two and let's say AP scholars is number three if they get into all three they're going to plumbing because that's where they chose, right? That was their first choice. And so we do a little bit more of our control on that side. So it really helps with that ability to control. Um, the, um, the lottery process is probably my favorite um, part of this whole thing. We have two schools that run lotteries and they are very competitive as in like the families want us to, um, televise it like the NFL draft and they've asked like they've legitimately are like well I don't understand why you don't and I'm like well first of all student data let's start there <laughs> um, and but they are like no like you give my kid a number and you pull like number one woo, right and we're not doing that and so being able to really defend the true randomness of the lottery and the true like, hey, it's not Karima going in there and saying like, I really like these six kids. It is a program saying you've put these kids in these buckets and we've now thrown them in the air and mixed them all up. And here's who gets in has really helped, especially with those programs. Um, so I am, I think if you're going, you're considering, you're thinking about it, I'm 100% yes. Um, second thing I would say is if you, there's a school or division that you see that currently uses the program, um, you might want to do that and look at what they have to offer. We, Prince William County is happy to offer to, you know, show you what we're doing. And I'm happy to get on the Zoom with anybody who wants to just kind of walk through what we do. Um, I know that like PG County, I think uses the, the program. And so when their application opened up, I went and peeked, right? Like I went and looked, and I was like, hey, what are they doing? How are they doing it? Does it align with our questions? I mean, it's always good to see what other people are doing to see if you can make your program better. Yeah. Um, and I do think the, the cost is really just very, for us, very logical. We're a very large division, obviously, um, but money is always still a concern, and especially when, you know, when money's bad, it's really a concern. When money's good, it's still a concern. Um, and so being able to justify spending the amount of money that we're spending on this really was so easy. And, and especially when I talked about all the other pieces that it could do for us and how we could use it for that data. I will also say that anytime you bring um, a question or a concern to the team, they're like, let me look into that and I'll get back to you. And so we've not had any real question that we've asked that they've said like, absolutely not. That's never going to happen. Forget it. Goodbye. Right. It's been like, hmm, we hadn't thought about that because nobody's asked me that. Let's look at it for next year. And we're and we're fine with that. And we just keep a running list of the things we have questions on. And it's been customer service is awesome. Yeah. Oh, good. That's great to hear. And I love the piece about the data because every kid is, you know, mom and dad's grandparents, pride and joy. Yes. So every every one of them are special. But being able to see that data, it, it takes away the, the feelings or the emotions attached to a program and it's data. It's, well, you didn't apply in, on time or, you know, you didn't 
ever apply at all. Yes. <laughs> it makes it very easy. Or you changed your application. You know, things like that. It's 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 a third point rather than it be um, emotional. Yes, for sure. And that has really helped us a lot. Um, I mean, even just yesterday, a family said, well, how do I get my kid into this program? And I said, your kid, it's a lottery and you're sitting on the wait list, but how do I get them to the top of the wait list? You hope that all of the kids ahead of them <laughs> get in, right? And then, you know, and then they came back with like, I don't think this is fair. What's your process? And so I was very clear, like, look, we, your name basically goes in a hat. It's a virtual hat. And so this is how we pull it. And I can't share with you the other parts because it has other student data in it, but I can guarantee you Karima wasn't sitting in a room deciding if your kid got in because honestly, I, it doesn't matter to us. And our, our entry requirements for our programs is pretty attainable to see you're better than good academic and, and um, behavioral standing. So when you have that parent that's like, but my kid is a straight A student, I'm like, oh my God, congratulations. That is so exciting. They're in the same place as all the C students, right? <laughs> like They get in the same opportunity to get into a program as that way um, with our governor schools being the exception to that, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and so it really does eliminate some of the um, the inequity is really a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, everywhere, not just here, but um, everywhere. And so being able to really be fair and say like, look, everybody here is being judged on the same process and done fairly. So that's that's been nice. So the last question I have is just if there's anything else you would like to share. I know we've gone way over time, but it has been, it has gone by so fast because you are great at speaking about <laughs> your programs. You can tell there's a lot of passion there and uh, you have a lot of pride in, in what you do and your team. So um, yeah, I, I appreciate going over with me, but is, is there anything else that you'd yeah. like to share? So I would just say like, this is, I mean, you guys know that I'm passionate about it and we've only been with you guys for almost a year now. Um, and so, what I kind of share with everybody else is like, if you have questions, just ask, right? There, I find that your team as Rebels is really good at saying like, we can or we can't do that. Or we don't have that capability right now, but we'll look into it down the road. And the at the very bottom of the application portal is a, um, a Scribbles help link and oh. phone number. I can't tell you how many of our families have gone directly there and the immediate answer that they've received. And they were like, this was so fast, this was so easy. And that really helps, right? That we didn't have to take all of the heat or all of the, you know, all of the work for answering the nuances of the program, but Scribbles had a team that was ready to answer and knew how to answer them. And, um, and if something happened that we needed to address on our side, we right away got that information so we could address it. So it really flows, like this one flows really, Scribbles flows really well into our team. And like when we talk about our strategic plan and the things that we're doing as a division, it just really makes sense. And I I'm, I can't say enough, I, I am thrilled and awesome and I think it's great. And my coordinator, if she were here, she's sitting in on another meeting for me, but she has learned things in the program that even I don't. And she's like, hey, did you know you could do this? So every day we learn something new because we are both very good clickers. Like we just are like, well, I wonder what this button does. And the good thing is you can't mess anything up. So <laughs> you, click away, <laughs> you click away and you see what you see. Um, I would also suggest that anyone who does this, that you make um, a, a dummy account um, that you can yeah. check and <laughs> you can check all the time. So we have, we both have dummy accounts. I use my cat's names because they don't fall into anybody else's names. Like my one cat is named Tuna. Um, and so I'm able to see what the family sees families see as they go through. So Tuna has been accepted and rejected from multiple things this year. Um, and um, it really helps that when a family says, I don't know why, or I can't see, or I didn't do, or this didn't happen to me, that you can say, yes, I understand what it is. Scroll. If you're looking on your phone, scroll to the right, right? <laughs> like that's the number one question. Scroll to the right. If you're looking on your phone, um, mm. or you'll say, if you got this message, this is where you should be. Um, and so that is really my biggest hint is to, or my biggest like hint or suggestion is make an account and make a multiple, right? The same account, but make it like, you're gonna accept one, you're gonna deny one, you're gonna wait list one, so that you understand what that program looks like and what it looks like to families. It's been really invaluable. Um, and I told the story yesterday, so I'll tell it as we kind of wrap up. And 
Tuna, like I said, is very active cat and she's applied to JRTC and she's applied to governor school and all of these things. And so every time the coordinators get them, we had one coordinator who's like, somebody applied named Tuna under your email address. What is going on? I'm like, that's my dummy account. I had another one who was like, I thought you did that so you could spy on us. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like also my dummy account, but I can spy from you at the division level. <laughs> I don't need a dummy account to see what you're doing, but thank you. But it is, it is really helpful. Um, and it really helps all of our schools as well. We tell them to do the same thing, to make their own school account where they can practice putting things in. Um, or if you have a student who, you know, families don't um, don't have email address, shockingly, mm -hmm. how many there are of those are. Our, and so we have some schools because of those really special nuances that we have them make accounts and help the families to apply through that basic account. Um, we just make sure we get the permission in writing and upload it to the documents and save it as part of that application portal. Um, because we don't want to deny any of our students access to these programs because yeah. their families aren't able to access them. And so we, there's a lot of things that we can do with the program and being able to attach documents and files as kids say like, yes, I want to go, but now I don't want to go. We just take that in, in writing and we attach it to their application and then we take them out of the program. So if it comes up later, it's like, but on you know June 6th, you said you didn't want to be here, right? right. Um, so we definitely yeah. have that. So like I said, I can talk about this all day, but I really appreciate this. It was awesome. Um, and again, if anyone has any questions or wants to speak with me directly, you're welcome to share my contact information. Well, this has been, this is, this has been great. Thank you so much. On behalf of Scribbles, thank you, Krema. You have answered beyond the questions I, I could have asked um, of you. You and your team are great. Thank and we you. just really, really appreciate you using, um, scribbles and, and giving your families the opportunities and um, to, to all the different programs and, and finding a way to really reach them. I mean, 55. <laughs> okay. Now, now I know why you want to sleep this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait. I'm so excited <laughs> for you. Well, I appreciate all this time um, for anybody that has uh, that's, that's watching. This is recorded. Um, you can certainly reach out to me. And um, Karima, if that's okay with you, I can give them your contact information. Absolutely, yep. Questions. Okay, terrific. Um, I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. And uh, if you do work Fridays, have a great Friday. If you're off, then that means today is your Friday. Good for you. And uh, have a great weekend and thank you for tuning in. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Karima. This was great. Thanks. Take care. Bye.